Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Mask of the Rose, uh, where today we are finally going to go and talk to Archie about our theories and stuff. But first, obviously, we're going to just spend some time sitting on our bed, looking out the window, and reaching for another memory out of that jumbled grab bag. Why, if I concentrate, I can recall... I'm going to click this one again, and we're going to see if it is in fact different. I'm guessing it will be a continuation given what else we have seen, you know? In a mirror, I saw something that wasn't my reflection. Nope, this is, this is exactly the same text. Weird. All right, yeah, the ink bottle upset, blue black bloomed in the flood water. Very strange, very strange. Okay, so. We have a theory. I mean, theory. We have we have a story that we can tell. I don't necessarily know how I feel about this, but it's definitely like a full story that we can tell. It's marked complete. Let's just go. Let's go talk to Archie and see how Archie feels about it. Uh, which we do right here, right? You know what? I'm gonna see whether Horatia needs anything first. We're gonna we're gonna spend this day basically at the at the boarding house doing stuff. I wonder if visit with Horatia is the more appropriate um what do you call it? The, the more appropriate option here for the, the kind of interaction I'm trying to have. Cause I wanna just be doing my part, you know? There you are, my friend. Um, boy, I'm reluctant to click come straight to the point when I don't know what the point is. This is more than a social call, apparently. I, I meant to ask you whether there's anything I can help you with. This, that's a social, that's actually a social call. That's what a social call is. There are a few things. One's a kindness to all the lodgers. One involves strange creatures. Uh, yo, I'm into both of those things so much. Tell me about the strange creatures. I have a confession. I saw an enormous tentacle in the basement not so long ago. I didn't tell you and the others because I thought it might put you off the house. Yes, yes, it might have. And it didn't seem a great danger. That is, it wasn't doing anything, other than stealing the odd supplies now and then. Seemed a lazy thing, really. Grew a bit fond. Now I hear tell there's been a man made a tentacle scene, bold as brass. Heard it from a few sources, beyond Mrs. Besom's witterings. I don't know who Mrs. Besom is. Lurking in the dark where the caves have opened on the south bank. Um, I think this is fair. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with all these tentacles. Look, as your landlady, I have to give notice if it takes over another room. But I'm glad to know it's worrying you too. Makes me feel a bit less like I'm losing the plot. No, the tentacle is a very normal thing to be concerned about. And a couple of the neighbors have mentioned a sinkhole when they've stopped by for tea. Caves below the streets by the south bank. Movement in the depths. Coils slithering in the gaslights. So it's not just us, it seems. Yeah. Um. I, boy. It feels... A couple of neighbors have mentioned a sinkhole. It doesn't... Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. It's tenuous, I think. It's tenuous. Basically, like, the the whole connection here is the thing is underground. Uh, so if I don't think if I don't think there's a good case being made here, then the polite thing to do is to assume that she's not making that case. So maybe she's suggesting we need further investigation. And you want me to go down there and see if there's a connection. Well, not at the expense of your own safety. 
I still have bills to pay, after all. Even in all this, the utilities must be kept up. Yep, and you sure would hate for an all-of-a-sudden reliable uh, source of payment to disappear. But I'd like to know as much as I can, and you're more at liberty than me. I don't know that there's a connection between our basement and these caves. But best be on your guard. Trouble comes from below down here. Uh, listen, trouble kind of comes from every direction down here. If there's anything I know about the Neath. Well, if anyone knows the, pl the way to this place, it'll be Harjit. Okay, my business here is done. Uh, there's a stew in the kitchen that needs looking after. I am not courting Horatia. Horatia is like a member of my own family. All right. So that's interesting. We're totally going to look into that. But for right now, I do want to just go talk to Archie. Let's discuss theories of ministry misbehavior with our friend Archie. Gosh, all those other options just completely vanished, huh? Archie, Archie knows my whole deal. I'm satisfied with this. Come on. Archie holds my eye for a little longer than usual. A reminder, perhaps, of our shared pursuit. Um... I am going to mention the mirror glimpses. The night of the fall, I saw something that wasn't my own face when I looked in the mirror. It was a woman in a flooding palace, and the sight of her alarmed me. I go on for some time and make no effort to hide how frightening the whole business was. The description becomes more frank as I go on. I see. Well, I'm glad you told me. I've not lost a patient today, and there's no one raving and in need of confinement, so I'll count that to the good. This is moving on. That's just a complete non sequitur. Okay, that's fine. Um, Out of curiosity, my friend, what do you do for a patient like that? All I can do is try to calm them a bit. There's no hope in getting them to bedlam. But there's a man comes around and takes them away. I've never seen him at his. I've never seen him at his work. But sometimes I'll go to see a patient again and find that he's been and gone. Huh. That's worrying, right? Do, do you know where they go? The patients that are taken away. Nay, they don't come back. And for the most part, there's no looking for them. If they have a family, the family doesn't want them back. Huh. Well, that's disquieting. We're having a rough day as far as disquiet goes. All right, well, how about this? Oh, I've not seen this one before. Harjit's spoken of the like now and then. Graffiti on the walls of houses that the ministries have told him to, uh, to hide or clean off. And I told him it was no more than the marks the beggars put around. Uh, to tell which houses are safe to beg from and which aren't. But this would be a fair bit more than that. I have a friend in Fleet Street who will want these. Pays good money for what he can print. I'll split the price between us. Oh, is that a good idea? You won't mind me using the rest on medicines, I know. Uh, yeah, but this is like just a the I thought we were just going to talk about it. I don't know that it's a good idea to just like move on that. And it's not as though I could go to Archie's buyer myself, of course. There is a brief lull in the conversation. Have you spoken much with Constable Hargett? Um, laugh, but don't answer. I chuckle, but don't reply. Huh? As you like, it's no great matter. He's far from home. We understand each other, that road. And he wants to get the best of the beasts that live down here. If you've seen him fight, you'll never forget it. If we ever got back to surface, I'd bring Harjit to uh, I'd bring Harjit to Glasgow. Or, it might be that's a fool's hope. I like to think on it though. Yeah, you know, such things are not unknown down here. 
You'll say it's my rural upbringing, but I've not known many like you before. Um, let's let's dig in on his his recollections and whatnot. I want to get to know Archibald a little bit better. The conversation turns to me to medicine and Archie's hopes for it. In childhood, it seems he was fascinated with Frankenstein, and with the stories of the Resurrection Men in Edinburgh, pulling bodies out of graves. These elements mingled into curious fantasies of the scientific inventions that he would one day achieve. Adulthood and a bit of experience in the world may have tempered his expectations, but he still turns excitable at possibilities outside our current imaginings. It would be, he says, very useful in our present circumstance if people could be taught to digest rocks, for instance, or to derive more nutrition from moisture in the air. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. You should feel free to come and talk with me anytime. Well, my own room's not big enough to turn about in, of course. But you can find me in the parlor. Yeah, um, indicate my interest, but only in friendship. I think well of you. <laughs> Perfectly normal, non-robotic thing to say at this moment. But I wouldn't want to give the wrong impression. With that understood, I'd be happy to. Excellent. Okay, he took that well. I don't think we're breaking any hearts here. It isn't long until dinner is served. Uh, I'm, we're ready. There are a few minutes of preparation. Hopefully I'm being helpful. Eat up, Archie. Aren't you always warning us about lack of nutrition? <laughs> I'm sorry, Horatia. You've cooked it as well as anyone could do. No need to tell me that. What are you brooding on, then? Uh, I was thinking on my mother. If she thinks I was killed, it'll be terrible for her heart. Uh, well, I mean... Someone else is probably on the surface worried sick about their mother in London. Someone that maybe you're helping here. Uh, David Landau's relatives are on the surface. He has no one here but his sister and some distant cousins. Oh, there you are then. Say I get out of this hole in the ground at last and all the way back up to Glasgow and find she's passed a grief before I got there. Positively Greek. I've told you before, you should ask Grizz to help you. Ask me for what? I've told you before, I can't set off the masters. They can't be doing little favors here and there and everywhere. Do you know how many people live in London? No, my duck, I don't. Nor do you either, or you wouldn't need this census. My mother begged me not to come all the way to London. She said I could study just as well in Glasgow. Or if I had to go away, then no further than Edinburgh. There's plenty of physicians there training. It was me that chose to put the distance. Okay, so he's he's dealing with guilt on top of everything. Uh, is it appropriate to get up and hug him? I don't want to just be like interrogating him in this moment, right? I guess I'm going to I'm going to try a hug. We formally established a boundary earlier today. I think that this should be safe to do. I embrace Archie. Archie touches my hand. For a moment, no one speaks. Uh and then yeah, make sure to help clear the dishes. When the meal's over, I give Horatia a hand cleaning up. Yep, and she is grateful as always. Well, that was a quick one. I do feel like we, um, it was valuable for us to, to participate in story making for Archie. And it was definitely valuable for, uh, for us to learn about the tentacle. Another morning, another newspaper. This morning lies open on the table. Missing baby found in vast basement spider web. Masters urge calm. As for the secrets Archie and I have made known, uh, they do not have a headline. 
Not yet. There is only a small item in the back of the paper. If I'm not too occupied otherwise, I can always ask my friends and acquaintances whether there's anything they need from me. Yeah, no, I know that. I know that, and I do have an additional task already. Let's go have a chat with Harjit. So, other stories about the masters that might shock the ordinary Londoner. We don't really have a lot. I feel like we maybe need to wait on this until we have more actions. Motive. Mr. Pages knew that London was threatened by many monstrous things beneath. It provoked the typical Londoner somehow. <laughs> the typical Londoner posed no challenges and asked no questions. Yeah. We're going to we're going to find some words that have to do with this while trying to visit the monsters today. That's my plan. All right, what do we got memory wise? Okay, at least the mirror things off the uh, the list now. How about this? There were days when I couldn't leave my room and I couldn't also think of anything that had happened or anything that was going to happen. At most, I could bring myself to remember the previous day, pulling it into my mind from a single detail. Hand over hand, hour over hour, like hauling up a giant's comforter when it has slipped off the bed. And then, when it's briefly mastered, never managing to tuck it in the corners, so off it slips again. Unmarked, forgettable time, which ceased to be part of my life as soon as I had lived it. I go about now and my days are better, but what was wrong has not come right. A wound that does not close as lips do not close when they have something still to say. Oh, that's a fascinating way of describing it. Like a wound that is not just a wound that is not just still laying open, but is laying open expectantly. Fascinating. Um, yeah, let's head outside. Uh, we need to have a chat with Harjit, which we would do here, right? I am going to put on my apron. I guess the flower, too. Yeah, well, this is not really a black coat situation. I think this will be fine. Winnie, it's good to see you. Uh, not flirting. Let's just get to straight to the point here. There's a wild thing going on and I need to know about it. I'm here for a reason. Uh, yeah, tell me something about a cavern of tentacled creatures, perhaps? D do you know how to get to the cavern of tentacled creatures? I believe I know what you mean. Harjit shows me the way as he did before. At certain points, he makes me look up at the stalactites above and fix their relationship in my mind. They sparkle with something other than stars. Yeah, stars are kind of bad news anyway. But don't treat the stars like constellations. And they do not stand still. Ah, the Warrens of Amber, a warren of brooding tunnels and resinous deposits. Harjit takes me as far as the cavern entrance and suggests I watch my back. The descent is steep, the caverns lightless and treacherous. I walk in the dripping dark for a very long time. Has anyone else ever been this way? Will I ever return? Until, at last, a light. I think that goal complete might have been a little early uh, in the narrative here. What are you doing down here? Crashing about in the dark like an escaped sorrow spider. My friend and I heard you from miles below. 
the sound was vexing him. And, more importantly, vexing me. Uh... Again, we have, like, sort of a practiced obsequiousness, right? And probably not, probably not, like, hurling questions at her. Um, I guess let's, this is the sort of, like, the most ingratiating line we have. Are you from around these parts? I am not native to the caves, if that is your question. I can also assure you I do not come from your fetid city. Though I have learned your ungainly language. Nor did I spout from the flowers like a hero of old. I have been here a very long time. My name is Barkujin. I used to be a person of consequence. My city predates yours, though it is now gone. Yours fell on it, but I do not hold it against you. The fourth city had already gone to the dogs, and worse. Huh. I'm going to join in on her joke. You know, a little, a little bit of humor as a way of relating to each other. I assume Atlantis is lying around down here somewhere. Eden's a stone's throw. Do not be foolish. There is no such state. The earthly paradise, should it have ever existed, is far from here. Though my city resembled it once. Okay, so not a big fan of humor. I was going to say, like, the, the, the text said join in on her joke, but joke is a really strong word for what was going on there. Well, it seems best I escort you into the caverns if you mean to explore. There are things down here it would be best not to fall into. You may not take my arm. And my friend would welcome company. It saves him talking at me. She leads me deeper into the darkness. Okay, this is a little, um, a little weird. I have been watching your city for some time. I have made a few trips to the market above and bartered for what I could with what little we have. I have observed that Londoners are an excitable breed. It is in this spirit that I warn you not to be alarmed at the appearance of my friend. He cannot help it. Uh, I'm going to quietly steal myself. I wonder what I'm getting myself into. His people are from far away, or long ago. They emerged centuries ago from these caves. I do not know how deep their roots run. They do not resemble us. They do not think like us. They do not act like us. But they do not mean to harm us. Uh, it is not far now. Am I going to be able to get back out of here? She leads me through dark and twisting caverns for a very long time. It feels like days. Oh, hey, it is one of the squid men. This is Batachikan. It is not his name, but what he has permitted me to call him. Names are unknown to his people. He is a man of surpassing flexibility. Hmm. Perhaps rubbery man is the more suitable translation. Though, of course, he is not a man, but he has insisted upon the masculine. I have not wished to dispute this. Yeah. Um. Again, a little bit of humor to break the... She's not going to be into this. But, like, this is kind of the same thing, right? This is for sure... It has the vibe of an innuendo, at the very least. I'm going to say the bottom thing, even if she doesn't love it. Well, I imagine there's more than a few uses for such a skill. But Tachi Khan makes an innocent hooting noise. Believe me, the novelty wears off after the first century. 
And now you've only encouraged him. You are the first to venture down here. So is the implication... Never mind. We're better off not thinking about it. Though secrecy has grown harder and harder of late. Tachi Khan insisted we get as close to the surface as we could. I told him it was only a matter of time, and I was right. But Tachi Khan makes a series of plunge and honks. The gesture is obvious. The surface. There are others of his kind, many in deeper places than here. They sheltered me from the dissolution of my city. They have sent us from the vats to be their emissaries. They have sent us from the vats to be their emissaries. Huh. I have been his eyes and ears while we waited to see what would become of your new city. I have even learned your language. What under heaven happened there? Such an ugly polygam polygamous tongue. Ah, I believe we have tea. Will you take a cup? Tachi Khan makes a series of frantic honks as though to dissuade me. Uh, here's the thing. I don't really drink tea. I, I couldn't possibly. How disappointing. Is there an error in how I make it? How would I know? I didn't have any. Uh. <laughs> so, offer to show her a London method of making tea feels really shitty. The reason I don't want this cup of tea is not because I think she did a bad job, it's because I I'm not interested in tea. But this, this feels harsh, this feels like really snapping back at her. It's like, this is, this sucks and she will probably think that it sucks. This is a weird thing to do, why are these the options? I guess I'm gonna do the bottom one. You might find that out yourself since you are doing so much snooping. I do not spy. Besides, you do not have the correct milk. Even though the substitute I use down here is not quite right either. But we must make do. He wishes to... Uh, I had mosaic tiles somewhere for the difficult ones. Bear with me, as that cheating costermonger at the market says. Interesting. But Tachikan approaches with a plaintive burbling. And extends a tentacle. He wants me to take it. I will give the tentacle a polite shake. I give it a firm shake. It is oleaginous and soft as silk. Patachi Khan makes a pleased honk. I have it. That noise means a recumbence is desired, but not... Oh. Yeah, he would like us to get recumbent. I see that I am superfluous. That shall be my epithet. Superfluous Barkujin. Boy, he is really emoting over there. Barkajin is still for a moment. Then she rolls her eyes. Very well. I do recall this one. I accept the apology. But Tachikan makes a plangent noise like a duck being deflated. I think this indicates contentment? This is followed by a series of trilling ululations. No, I would not ask that on a first visit. She glances at me. Perhaps if our new friend were to come again, they might indicate by so doing that they are willing to entertain a request of such... viscosity. Uh... <laughs> okay. The conversation waits on Barkajin. They watch me depart. I sense they wish I had stayed, but were too cautious to ask. Perhaps they might welcome another visit in the future. What a strange... Uh, boy. That was weird in a whole different way than I was expecting. 
It is a long and treacherous road back through the caves. Um, I have only platonic intentions toward Barkajin. I don't think there's any, any feeling there at all. My face betrays my feelings. There's time to run another errand today. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, gosh, what do we want to do? I mean, maybe I want to go to the market. Yeah, we can look at Ivy's goods for sale. Like, I have all this money. It's kind of burning a hole in my pocket. Did we do this already? I don't think we did this already. The risk of going to see Ivy hatless is that she may very well try to sell me a new one. I would actually not be totally opposed to that. If we could get a hat that like works with our ensemble, you know? Good hollow, Miss Mademoiselle. I trust you're keeping healthy. Uh... Expressing surprise at Ivy's continued survival seems rude. I'm just going to make small talk. And by small talk, I mean weird talk. I recount the newspaper story. Spiders carried off an entire baby. It was found in the basement wrapped in silk. Oh? There were also the remains of a medium-sized hunting dog, though who can say why such a dog was in London to start with? I make the story as engaging as I can. Plenty of detail and a, far, a fair sprinkling of dramatic pauses. Uh, some of the beasties you hear tell them must have, must have precious rare pelts, or scales, or what have you. I'd like to see them for myself. Yeah. Let's talk about the need to protect oneself and discover if she might have any, uh, you know, devices or anything on that end. Well, safety begins at home. We should look after our own, and be careful of things and people we don't know. You never know what's out there. Ivy hears me out, but it's plain this question doesn't matter as much to her as to me. Ah, don't mind me. You missed a spot of color this morning. A man came in with a basket of so-called fish. Mobbed, he was. Sold for ten guineas each. But they wasn't fish. Cold and wet and slippery, maybe, but not fish. My voice for Ivy is definitely morphing. Oh? Well, I don't know what they were. I just know what they weren't. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, talk about what you have for sale. Hmm, something respectable and ladylike. A straw hat suitable for making new friends or a top hat. Also suitable for making new friends. A top hat with, like, mushrooms all over it, which I guess is kind of rad. They, they both have mushrooms. Um. I kind of like that straw hat. There's less reason for a really wide-brimmed hat down here, though, I would imagine. There's not even, like, sunlight to shield yourself from. Is our character the kind of character who wears the ladylike hat or the top hat? I think the ladylike hat is much is more of a fashion move, right? Trimmed with mushrooms rather than flowers in the style of the moment. Interesting. I can intentionally overpay. I think I'm going to. I think this will help us make friends with Ivy. I'll give you three pennies for that lady's straw hat. Well, now, I'd have taken two. But they say generosity always does come back to you. Not sure it's true, mademoiselle, but I owe you one now. Okay, that's something that feels meaningful. It's the sort of thing to wear when I want to get to know someone better. We do a lot of that. Out of curiosity, what else do you have for sale? Could I still, could I buy a garment as well? Do we want to... Hmm... Society here with a capital S. I'm assuming they just mean, you know, high society. The, the fancy folk. 
We don't really need something at home in the university. I think, what, what about this? Our collection contains many things of this sort that could be fitted to you. I am gonna... I am not asking for the top as a gift. I'm gonna overpay for it as well. We're just... We're really getting in good with her. I'll give you three pennies for that lady's top. Okay, generosity does come back to you. I owe you one now. I wonder if there is an effect here of, like, if we are even kinder to her um it matters more or if it's just like once you've once you've gotten her to owe you a favor that's as far as that goes you know uh i think we're good for now we probably don't have enough money to buy a thing and overpay for it anyway i wish ivy a good afternoon well, you're not bad company to have around i must say i'd be glad to talk to you again if you were to come back Often there's customers, but sometimes there aren't. Huh. Um. I think I just want to be pals with Ivy. I think I've, I'm smitten uh, by that lady who doesn't, by Rachel, who does not care for me. I'd like that. That suits. I have something for you. Some of us want to make ourselves at home in a place we weren't born to. If anyone asks, when you're rubbing elbows in good company, you tell them you got it from me. I'm trusting you to spread the word. But if they ask, I charged you a good high price and you are glad to pay it. Or they'll say, old Ivy's gone soft in the head. Okay, an elegant cloak. Inspires a lofty attitude and an inclination to protect the weak. Um, I feel like my opinion is unchanged. My feelings are stronger than ever. Is this, this feels like it's going romantic. Uh, my opinion is unchanged. Ivy and I are pals. We're trying to be friendly. I shake my head to clear it. The ruminations are gone. All is as it was. At this point, I go back to Horatia's. Um, and I change clothes before dinner. And we have gotten ourselves a fancy new hat. I think not at the dinner table, though. Right? With the hat? It started snowing outside. It isn't ordinary snow. Something has gone very badly at the Ministry. Mr. Pages took away a great supply of our papers. Together with many of the books and novels that it assembled. All of them taken into the bazaar in wheelbarrows. So many that it attracted quite a crowd. I thought those were for his personal collection. No, he was always planning to take them to the bazaar, but it didn't go well. And that seemed to concern him even more. He said London might not last long in the snow. Ha. Huh. Well, I assume, um, I assume Mr. Pages has a better idea than we do what's going on down here. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Pages is easily agitated. I don't think that means we are safe. Grizz shakes her head. Mr. Pages has a very lively fear of what may happen next, and I cannot put this out of my head. Silence falls, and I make sure to help with the dishes. Alright, no new text. Yeah, I think we can go straight to sleep. So, technically I probably have, um, I don't know, I, we could do another day, but I am actually a little pressed for time today, and maybe maybe a short episode would be good for me schedule-wise, so appreciate, uh, apologies if that's a bummer for y'all. Another morning, another newspaper, Archie bought one, the headlines read, 
Parliament buildings visible in river. All parliamentarians feared drowned. Yeah, that seems uh, like a perhaps non-ideal situation. I guess I don't know what their parliament was like at the moment of the divergent of the uh, divergence of the timelines. Uh, but I do know that that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you return next time, I'm hoping to make better friends with that rubbery man. And hopefully... Gosh, I hope we can discover that whatever the tentacle is that's um, <laughs> appearing in the basement of this very house, it's f friendly. It's something we can make friends with. Keep your fingers crossed for me, just in case. And we'll see you then.